Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope this video finds you well and in good spirits wherever you are in the world. Please stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong, and we will beat this. We will win. Uh, so my warmest regards to all of you during these times. And with that, I would like to continue if I may, with my discussion of the Criterion Collection Laserdiscs. And today I'd like to focus my attention on this particular title, which is the film Lola Montez. <laughs> is directed by the great Max Ophuls and it is from 1955-1956. Uh, this particular Laserdisc sets forth the film as being from 1956 and actually I'll explain that uh, in a moment because that's actually a pretty significant detail in the context of its release history. But uh, to speak about the film itself for a moment, I mean, this is a film that is known for its uh, very visual uh, spectacle and its color palette and the way that it's presenting these uh, wonderful settings and designs and the use of color and the use of framing and the very innovative way that it uses framing uh, in visual terms to present a kind of flashback device uh, in the in the version that is presented in the Criterion Laserdisc here and then in the subsequent uh, Blu-ray as well which I'll get to in a second uh, but uh, uh, amongst these visual flares that are truly spectacular, truly beautiful, and filled with a lot of color and spectacle and panache, there is, of course, at the core of this film, a story about uh, a woman who is going through her life and the episodes that she encounters throughout her life that lead her to the place that she ends up and the story is set forth in a kind of flashback structure and so we see where she ends up at the start of the film and then we go back through her life through her own flashbacks and through the the very intricate and quite clever structure that the film presents as a kind of wraparound story or a conceit if you will uh, that ties all these episodes together and at the, the core of this is the character of Lola Montez. And so we have this uh, very uh, emotional story that is wrapped around in this almost confectionary uh, delight of uh, visual uh, treats and wonders and colors and the way that uh, settings are, are displayed and the, the noise and the spectacle. And, uh, but it's all uh, set forth with a heart that is uh, anchored by this particular character and what she's going through and the characters around her and how they are affected by her and the relationships that she has with various people and how they are affected and how they affect her uh, and what that end result ends up becoming and so it's it's quite a stunning work and it's very uh, it's very emotional it's very sad in places and it's also uh, filled with a lot of poignancy and tenderness as well, as well as having a, a kind of, of, uh, of a, a visual through line that really helps to tie the film together and create this wonderful emotional film on the one hand that is still a visual treat and spectacle on the other. Uh, that is, in a nutshell, the film Lola Montez. Now, with respect to this particular Criterion Collection Laserdisc, let me just present this, uh, what this particular Laserdisc is. This is a first printing of Lola Montez, and this is from 1986. Now, as you may recall, Criterion began to uh, make its Laserdiscs 
uh, Voyager company and Criterion be um, began to make its laser discs around this time, uh, the the early the mid to early uh, late 1980s. And so this is 1986. And so this actually falls, uh, in terms of years anyway, in the first printings, this actually falls before 1987, which is the year of the first printing of the Seventh Seal, for example. And so uh, this falls before that, at least if we were to go by what's the, what the years are at the back of the, 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 the laser disc itself. Um, but this is a disc that uh, does not have any spine number on it, at least what I have here. This is the CAV2 disc uh, release of the film, and it's also in uh, a widescreen letterbox format, and I'll get to that in a moment. But this is a f the film that is 110 minutes, so it's 110 minutes, and it says on the back here, 1956. So please remember those details, because I'll get to those later. It says 1956, and it, said, uh, it says 110 minutes. So uh, this is a uh, th th this is a, a kind of uh, a very uh, difficult film in terms of keeping track of its particular release history because it has a very complicated and convoluted release history which I'll also try to get to in a moment but for uh, purposes of this particular two disc CAV release from the Criterion Collection that is purported to be widescreen or letterbox this is the uh, 110 minute version and it uh, states that it's from 1956. Okay, so this is the front cover and as you can see this front cover has a slightly different motif to it. Uh, it's slightly different than let's say the silver cover editions that we saw earlier. It's also different in that we don't see any criterion logo banner along the top here or anything like that. What we see is a Janus Films logo in one corner and then the early early Criterion Collection logo in this corner. And then we have in the middle we have a frame of a particular uh, moment of the film that is colorized in some stylized manner and then we have the the title Lola Montez uh, adorning the, the top part of this. And uh, I should say that, well, let me look at, the, let me just turn to the back here. And the back has uh, the, uh, the information about the film. And so we have an essay here, a brief essay, but this is by Andrew Saris. And Andrew Saris is known for uh, many things, of course, but uh, among which is his great admiration for Max Ophuls in this particular film uh, itself. And so to have his essay here is very interesting. And then we have information about the cast and crew here. And then we have the uh, side chapter breakdown. As I say, this is two discs and it's a 110 minute version of the film. So it's spread out over two discs, two sides per disc, so four sides in total. So we have the chapter breakdown here side one, two, three, and four. And then if you notice here, we have a little logo, which is to indicate that this is presented in letterbox or widescreen format, which was still a big novelty. If we remember 1986, again, from my own personal uh, experience, I don't recall any VHS releases at the time that would have been widescreen or letterbox that came a little bit later and it's now the, the, the norm but at the time this was a pretty big deal so uh, that's amazing uh, that's really great and then I open this up and we can see the inside of this gatefold uh, the inner uh, layout of this film and we see some uh, uh, pictures here and we see some blurbs and captions that are written about uh, Max Ophuls, the director, and so this is a very interesting layout. I should point out here that I have my little snow globe here in front of this particular picture. This particular picture does not depict any nudity per se, but it does have a picture that is uh, that could be seen as being uh, uh, a depiction of nudity. As I say, it is not nudity, but it looks like nudity in terms of the dress and the and the particular uh, uh, fashion that uh, that is being adorned by the the character at the time and so uh, just in case you know YouTube can be a little bit uh, sensitive when it comes to these sorts of images that could even resemble nudity and so just to be on the safe side I've put a little 
uh, snow globe here to uh, to block any potential quote unquote offending image. It's a completely innocent image uh, in and of itself. And as I say, there's no nudity here, but uh, you never can tell with YouTube. And so uh, just for that, I, I'm just going to put this here. But please note that you can actually find this still uh, online if you look. And so. Um, um, Anyway, this is the inside portion of this particular laser disc. And so now what I will do is I will now uh, go back to this. I should point out one particular detail which is pretty important in terms of laser discs, which is that this spine is, again, it's very difficult to make out, I apologize, but the top of the spine says Lola Montez and the bottom says Criterion. Uh, it doesn't say Criterion Collection, it just says Criterion. And there is no spine number. Um, there is, of course, a lot of damage here because this is an old disc. And so there is some uh, no understandable wear and tear. Uh, so, uh, But there is no spine number at the bottom of this. This is, however, considered to be spine number 12. And the reason why is because this particular CAV double disc, two disc release was once again uh, indicated as being first printed in 1986. Then in 1990, Criterion released this title again on Laserdisc, which is right here. And as you can see, this particular Laserdisc is something that is a little bit similar to the type of Laserdisc layout design that we we know now with the banner across there and we have the logo here and then we have this the the center uh, uh, still or photo and then lola montez uh, this is the clv single release uh, single disc release of this film so it's only on one disc laser disc side one and side two clv this is also widescreen uh, but I'll, again, I'll get to that in a second. It also has the essay by Andrew Saris on the back. You can see here that there are a couple stills here. Um, and then there's the information about the cast and crew and then the side chapter breakdown. Once again, side one and side two. And so uh, this is, again, the printing from 1990. So it's a couple years after the earlier CAV non-spine numbered edition of this on Laserdisc. However, this particular uh, single disc release has a spine number on the side. Again, it's very difficult to make out, but in red uh, it says 12A, capital A. And we've seen this with other titles in the Criterion Collection catalog, but this A indicates that uh, this is an alternative or an accompanying spine-numbered release that comes with the main spine-numbered release. In other words, if there is a, uh, a spine number 10 and a 10A, that means those two are the same titles, except one is usually, the, the, the number 10 is usually given to, let's say, the CAV release, and then the, the 10A a designation is given to the same film but the CLV release of that film. So uh, this is an example of that kind of, of a, a Laserdisc spine number cataloging if you will. But one of the things that's confusing about this of course is as I say when this was originally released in 1986 as far as this particular copy that I have there was no spine number and so what I can assume is that when this later release was made in 1990 this was probably around the time that Criterion was trying to really arrange its spine numbers and so the decision was made to have this particular title at number 12 and so by the time this particular CLV single disc release was made in 1990 then by this time the number 12 is given to this title which means that for this CAV title we can refer to this or this is now generally referred to being Criterion Collection spine number 12 uh, for the laser discs and so uh, so it's an interesting thing, you know, as I said, uh, we had, uh, if you recall, The Seventh Seal uh, by Ingmar Bergman. That CAV release, at least what I have, was released in 1987. This was released in 1986, so this came first, if uh, those years are correct. So Lola Montez, the CAV, came first, and yet 
the seventh seal, having come later, is still uh, designated with spine number 10, but this is designated with spine number 12. So uh, that's a little bit of a confusion. But as I say, we know this is 12 because the CLV release of this film designates it as being 12A. So we can, uh, this therefore is generally referred to as being Lola Montez, the Criterion Collection Laserdisc spine number 12 and 12A. Uh, but there is a little bit of an issue about the spine numbering. So just keep that in mind. But for uh, general discussions, uh, and when you see this online described, people will describe the describe this as being spine number 12. But uh, just keep in mind that little uh, issue uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, spine numbering. Uh, but going back to the CAV release for a second, I should also mention that this has no other supplements to it. And so that is this also true for this particular release. The, both the CLV and the CAV releases don't have any extra supplements. The only supplement or only special feature that it could uh, we could say that it has is that it is uh, uh, presenting the film in widescreen format. As we indicate, as is indicated here, and as is indicated on the back right here, as I said. So uh, that is a, a very interesting point. Uh, but uh, with respect to the the widescreen, there is a little bit of an issue. And in order to be able to explain that, I need to bring in this, which is the Blu-ray of Lola Montez in the Criterion Collection now. This is spine number 503, and I've taken the liberty of taking out the particular booklet which is in here, uh, which is also very important. Now, this film, Lola Montez, has a very, uh, a very complicated and convoluted release history. It's very, very complicated, and um, if you have this, you turn to the back of this, um, there's a little section which says about the restoration and transfer with respect to this particular Blu-ray release. And the second paragraph says, Lola Montez premiered in Paris on December 22nd, 1955. A hugely anticipated expensive production shot in three versions, French, German, and English. The film was an instant critical, popular, and financial disaster. In vain, Max Ophuls fought to prevent the re-editing of his film and its three original negatives. The French version alone would ultimately have three incarnations. One, the original premiere version from December 1955, which ran 114 minutes and contained multilingual passages. Two, the a February 1956 version down to 110 minutes after the deletion of four sequences with all the multilingual passages now dubbed in French. And three, a 1957 cut that ran 91 minutes and told the story in chronological order with voiceover commentary and shortened circus sequences. And then much later, um, this film was, uh, there was an attempt made to restore this um, because it had been cut down to this 91 minute version but then there were efforts made to tr uh, starting from the late 1960s to try to restore it to uh, at, at the, as long as possible and then what ended up happening was that a 110 minute version uh, was uh, was prepared or was created and so what we have with this particular laser disc as far as I understand it is that sort of uh, restored uh, version of the film that is matching the 1956 110 minute version in French and so that's my understanding of what this particular release from Criterion is with the CAV release and also subsequently with the CLV release again this was from 1986 and this is from 1990 so this is before any kind of other restoration of the film that we would later see from criteria um, released by criterion later in the 2000s uh, in this blu-ray uh, but uh, at this time uh, we have this uh, the film that is available in this 110 minute version and i can also say too that the version that we have with this particular criterion laserdisc does have all of the the, the sort of german spoken parts 
in French, in the French language. And so this, therefore, uh, is, I understand, purporting to be the version that is uh, meant to match that version which had been uh, shown in, fe- in theaters in 1956, six, which was the version that was cut down to 110 minutes from the n- December 1955 uh, premiere version in Paris, 114 minute version, again, according to the, the information in this booklet. So what does that mean? So just take a step back once again. What we have in this Criterion Laserdisc is purporting to be the version that's 110 minutes, and therefore it is, uh, I understand, it consistent with that version of the film, which was uh, the 1956 version. Therefore, this makes sense that the back of the uh, the back of the Laserdisc here and here describe the film as being in French with English subtitles and also being 1956, 110 minutes. So that's an interesting detail. Incidentally, if we look at the Blu-ray from Criterion now, this is 114 minutes. And so uh, I understand that this purports to be that uh, version that was released uh, at 114 minutes uh, in 1955, December 1955. And therefore, the back of the Blu-ray indicates the film as being 1955, not 1956. This indicates the film as being 1956. This indicates the film as being 1955. And if you think that, remember, this is the 114-minute version, which purports to be that version which matches the December 1955 premiere in Paris, I'm assuming. That makes sense that this would be 1955. Then if this is the version that matches the 1956 version, that is 110 minutes, then it makes sense to have the back of the disc describe the film as being from 1956. So 1955 here, but 1956 here. Again, that's all my supposition and guesswork, but that seems to be the uh, uh, the, the most reasonable explanation for the, the differences in the years and also the differences in the running time. And in fact, when you watch these two versions, the Blu-ray version at 114 minutes and the Laserdisc version at 110 minutes, you can tell that there are certain scenes where this Laserdisc version, the 110 minute version, has shortened versions or uh, deleted portions uh, that we end up seeing in the 114 minute version. There, like just to give examples without getting too much into spoiler territory, there are some early scenes involving Lola Montez and Franz Liszt, and uh, the, the c- that scene is a little bit extended here in the 114 minute version. There's also a scene on a ship, and the ship scene is also given an extended uh, version here and uh, there's also a very famous tracking shot uh, and that tracking shot is intact here whereas in the shorter version there's a little bit of a, a dissolve to truncate it or to uh, to abbreviate it somewhat uh, and of course there are also differences in the soundtrack uh, as I indicated here with this version the, uh, the some of the moments in the film where uh, well, most of the film is in the French language. Uh, there are some moments in English, some moments in German. Uh, but for this particular version here, the moments that are spoken in German by some of the characters in the film are in fact dubbed in French. Whereas if you go to this version, the 114-minute version, those same moments uh, that are in, f- in German are actually spoken in German. Uh, so uh, there are differences in the soundtrack as well between this particular version and this particular version. Uh, so uh, that is, I think, a, a pretty uh, 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 critical thing to keep in mind. Um, and uh, once again, uh, that is only scratching the surface when it comes to it, an explanation of this particular uh, a film in its release history. I would s- uh, encourage you to, to try to look up some information about this because it is very, very complicated um, and uh, uh, it, it can be uh, quite confusing because we're not just talking about French versions, we're talking about German versions, we're talking about English versions. Um, there were um, uh, 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 references made in the past about how there was a purported 140 minute version that was the preferred uh, version by the director. In fact, Andrew Saris in his essay on the on both uh, uh, releases by Criterion says that uh, at the very beginning it says uh, to Paris surged into the um, 
uh, Maritnan Theatre on a Thursday evening, December 22nd, 1955, for the first public showing of Max Ophel's Lola Montez, a 140-minute cinemascope superproduction uh, budgeted at 648 million francs. So Andrew Saris, in his essay here, refers to that December 22nd, 1955 Paris uh, showing of Lola Montez as, as being 140 minutes. But... Um, that little fact, I think um, it's been uh, debunked by a number of scholars about this film Lola Montez. Um, and, you know, again, I'm not an expert on Lola Montez and the production and the release history, but um, uh, I would draw your attention again to the, the back part of this particular booklet, which is from the Blu ray of Criterion, where it actually says that the December 22nd, 1955 premiere in Paris was of the uh, the original premiere version from December 1955, which ran 114, 114 minutes, not 140, um, as uh, indicated in the essay. And um, if the debunking of this is true, uh, my understanding is that it was uh, the, the source of this 140 minute fact was uh, due to a, a kind of uh, human error. And so, uh, in fact, uh, if this is to be uh, relied upon, then the, the December 22nd, 1955 premiere in Paris was 114 minutes, not 140 minutes. Uh, but that's, I think, a detail that is an understandable thing to make uh, to make at the time of this essay by, by uh, Andrew Harris, which was, again, at the time of the release of the first version of this on Laserdisc, which was in 1986. So an understandable uh, point, but still a very interesting one that indicates, again, just how complicated and potentially uh, convoluted uh, a study of the release history of this film is because of the various uh, different versions uh, that were made. And then let me just also add that with respect to this particular Criterion version as compared to the Laserdisc, there is also a bit of interesting uh, things that are going on here. Of course the Criterion uh, uh, Blu-ray is purporting to be a really uh, beautiful restoration of this film and uh, it's it's really beautiful. Uh, the colors are crisp and sharp and, and lush and beautiful. And they really, in terms of visual quality, uh, the, the Blu-ray is, is, is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. The Laserdisc is, is fine for what it is, don't get me wrong, but uh, it is still Laserdisc quality. And when you compare the visual quality between the Laserdisc image and the Blu-ray image for this particular film, uh, this particular version, in terms of the colors and the use of the colors, really stands out. And so if you prefer that particular approach to the film, then the Blu-ray is, is obviously the way to go. But again, as a Laserdisc for the time, it was still a, a very, very good a great thing to have as you know the 110 minute version speaking of that I should also point out that this is in uh, widescreen letterbox but the letterboxing isn't perfect for the Laserdisc uh, 110 minute version on the Criterion Laserdisc because there is a little bit of cropping that is going on in particular uh, the um, uh, the left part uh, the left hand part of the frame seems to be cropped and you can tell this when you compare it with the later Criterion Blu-ray. If you just freeze frame the exact point in the film, you do a side-by-side -side comparison, you can tell in particular that the left part of the frame in the Criterion Blu-ray shows a little bit more than the left part of the frame as shown in the Laserdisc part uh, presentation of the film. Uh, that's pretty interesting. But Here's an interesting point that I, I myself noticed. Now, I'm not an expert in this as well, but I noticed in the early part of the film, the right part of the frame for the Laserdisc seems to show just a little bit more than the right part of the frame for the Criterion Blu-ray. And that was very interesting to me. Uh, this wasn't true for the entirety of the film. By the end of the film, I could tell that the right part of the frame for the Criterion Blu-ray was showing just about the same amount of information as the right part of the frame of the Criterion Laserdisc. But when I saw the beginning of the film, the, the early scenes of the film, and I freeze, uh, I freeze frame on the same moment, I could tell that, uh, for instance, in the early scenes with... Um, uh, lists and the early scenes in the circus, for example, if you freeze frame at the exact same moment, you can tell that the 
right side of the frame in, on the Laserdisc version shows just a little bit more than the right side of the frame for the Criterion Blu-ray presentation. Uh, again, that's not for the entirety of the film based on my own uh, eyeing of the frames, but uh, uh, it does occur uh, early part in the early parts of the film. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, if my own uh, eyesight judgment is to be believed, uh, then uh, yes, there is the possibility that we are getting a little bit more of the frame, at least for part of the film, with this particular release on the right side of the frame, uh, while at the same time we are getting a cropped version of the left side of the frame when compared to the Criterion Blu-ray. I hope that makes sense, uh, but it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, set of developments. And again, I, I don't, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what the release history is and what the presentation history is of this particular film. But uh, based on my own eyesight, I can uh, notice that the, the Criterion Blu-ray, at least for early parts of the film, does have a little bit less, a very uh, minute but still noticeable portion less on the right side of the frame than with this Laserdisc presentation. So that's something to keep in mind. For anyone who's a Lola Montes film expert, uh, if you have any information about this, please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear that. But um, uh, I should say, however, that uh, again, this is not a perfect letterbox presentation of the film, but it is very, very close. And so at the time, uh, this is probably the best uh, available version of this film. And so uh, this is uh, something to keep in mind, of course. Uh, this Criterion Laserdisc, I think, was doing the very best that it could uh, with the materials that were available to it at the time. And so to have this particular presentation as it is of this film, which I say is, again, a, a film that has a very complicated release history, I think is, is very good. Um, I suppose uh, it would have been nice, I suppose, to have a little bit more information about the release history on the, the laser discs. But uh, again, uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, we we can't ask for everything, right? Because again, these were still pioneering days in home media and laser disc uh, production uh, for uh, private uh, screening and private use. And so, uh, to have this particular version at all at this particular point in time in the late in the 80s and then in the 90s, I think was still a very, very big deal. So my friends, this is the Laserdisc of Lola Montez. And so uh, this is a Criterion Collection spy number 12. So thank you very much for your time. And until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you again and cheers. Thank you.